inflation easing is positive. If mm. it goes down, goes below 30%, mm. continues to ease, um, as that happens, uh, the populace will feel some ease. But we're far from that. Because 32, 30, 25 inflation is still high. Right. It means the price over last year mm. is up by 25%. That's significant. However, um, mm. the trend is positive, but the level is still high. I've mentioned a qualifier uh, for the benefit of our readers. We may expect, or our listeners, we may expect a, another, the, we've had two months of decline. Yes, decline. We may see an uptick in September because we all know that we've increased oil prices twice. Mm. Because we did the 855 yeah. and 897, and, and now we're talking about 950. So that may reflect in September inflation data. But I think that after a month or two, the decline should continue. Um, now, I've always made this point. An economy can grow. Good things can happen. There can be a trade surplus. There can be GDP growth. Mm. But you need specific policy action to make sure the benefits of growth are equitably distributed. Mm. So that's in the realm of social policy. Mm. What's our social policy? We need clarity around that. I don't like arbitrary or ad hoc palliatives and all of exactly. that. Exactly. I wanted to ask you of interventions. Uh, uh, of interventions we we need at. carefully thought out social investment programs. Mm. Um, I, I, in the short term, because of complaints about hunger and poverty, yeah, you need some mm. food intervention and things. But the more sustainable interventions I would love to see are in terms of public education. And, and they may reduce the cost on people if, for instance, you get good public health care, good family health care services, public transportation. And government, to be fair to them, is already taking a, a reasonable action in relation to public transportation with the CNG initiative. Yes, if we can fast track execution of that, that let that lead to some moderation in public transport costs. And then, so all of these things. Uh, capacity building for people, for uh, young adults who are unemployed, skill training, those are the kind of more women initiatives to empower them, traders and so on. So those are the kind of sustainable initiatives that I, I mean, in, in my little capacity, okay. I have an NGO that does uh, financing for women exclusively in my town. And, and uh, it's, it's I find that they pay back. I find that they're yeah. happy. I find that they, their lives, you can see someone move from borrowing 10000 in a month and repaying and getting to 200000 in a month over a period of 18 years. So those are sustainable initiatives. Those are the kind of initiatives that affect poverty. Um, if you, I give you a bag of rice, you finish eating it uh, in a month or two at the most. And then you are back to your poverty. So, so what, are, what can we do that will shift uh, these people's conditions in a sustainable manner? Those are the kind of things I would like. And the likes of IMF will still say Nigeria needs to sell fuel at the appropriate price. We are not still selling. Uh, you, know, you know, I have always believed that we must understand our economy ourselves yes. and make our own decisions. Mm. There may be occasions in which our decisions tally with, with our expectations. Yes. Yeah. But there will also be occasions in which our decisions do not meet their we know the expectations. Yeah. Because we live here. Yes. And, there, and like I said, there's always social policy. If you say we should increase it and our people say, no, we cannot bear this. Um, I... We like to see a fully deregulated oil market. Let me be fair. I would like to see that. But we have to balance our expectations or, or policy initiatives or policy decisions with the reality of social conditions. So, and the IMF cannot tell us that. They can't. They cannot tell us that. Hmm. I'm looking at all of this handshake and um, what should be happening. The CBN is also trying to do a lot, even around the FX uh, space. What the... Naira to dollar. You know, you know, I have come to a, <laughs> a stark 
conclusion. And I've been hinting at that for some months. I think that we do not need, I, I'm certain that we do not need a free float of the Naira. I think we should migrate policy carefully towards the managed float. Mm. And um, I, I am not persuaded that we should facilitate the continued depreciation of the currency at a timeline. We've done enough in terms of um, liberalizing the currency. We may be close to the end of the period. If the, F, the FX pressure from petrol is removed, um, perhaps we will see some moderation in the market. But otherwise, I, I would not like to see further devaluation of the currency. Mm. I think that uh, we have to be pragmatic with policy. And that suggests to me that I don't even think we should be at 1,600. But yeah, yeah. Yes, it's quite much. Why are they complementing each other? I'm now talking about the fiscal side and the monetary side because it's important that they don't work you know, against the Well, when you see the trade surplus, for instance, that the, 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 the CBN that, can wave that yeah. and say, okay, that's one benefit of our policy initiatives. But yeah, you know, there's a cost to policy. Mm -hmm. And... Um, even the issues around, F even around petrol price, the big elephant in the room is the fact that the dollar, the dollar. price keeps yeah. changing. Yeah. We're lucky, FX price, um, oil market, oil, global oil prices are are to be yeah. declining a bit, but we don't know where it will go in the medium and long term. So, so I think that we need a pragmatic policy environment around the FX exchange rate. Mm. That's, that's, that's very important. Let's talk food, agriculture, and also the interventions that we've seen, because like you said, food remains very important. Once people can feed, they would, uh, but we still have insecurity. And um, we see distribution of fertilizers, seedlings, and all of that. How can we ramp up and, you know, and but there's also a, uh, the government says levies and taxes should be off some particular food market. Can all these interventions, how soon will they start to trickle down? People want to buy this food. They, they can't wait. You know, one of the interesting things, the inflation data came rather yeah, late. Yeah. So yeah. I've not been able to see, okay, the, to see the breakdown. Food inflation component. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah, it the, was averaging 40%. Yes, before now. Um, so so that's, that's a problem. 40% mm -hmm. is that's high. In the cost of food. Uh, and you mentioned insecurity is still a factor. Yes. It does seem in the last week or two, uh, the government is finally mustering the focus and the political will to begin to exact some pressure on the security situation. We're seeing some positive results of uh, this bandit killed, that bandit killed. We have to be decisive about that. But beyond all of the insecurity, and the inflation that we're seeing, I am worried that I've not think, I don't think I've had any clear policy pronouncements from the Ministry of Agriculture in the last, since, May, or since the cabinet was appointed. So what has changed about agricultural policy? Or what has not changed? What's the focus of agricultural policy? I mean, and I extend that beyond agriculture. Where I, I, I was, making a presentation some days back, and I, and I expressed my concern that when in emergency season, in terms of economic policy, many things, but all we're focused on is CBN and Federal Ministry of Finance. And what is changing? What are the reforms around industry, trade, and investment, agriculture? Uh, we've seen some efforts in power to affect things. Let me leave that. We've seen some efforts in uh, internal affairs, or what's it yeah. called? Uh, in Ministry of Internal Affairs, Immigration, Passports, and yeah, all that. So there's interior. interior yes. you know? um, but there are many other places where there is yeah. complete silence. And this is not the time for that. Tourism, mm. culture, mm. Uh, agriculture in particular. Mm. What's the focus of policy around agriculture? I don't know that many Nigerians can say they know. I don't recall ever listening to, uh, to the minister or whoever is in charge of agriculture. 
And this is at a time when that is a national priority, when inflation is, food inflation is at 40% average, when insecurity is destroying our cultural output, when we need poli clear policies around the agricultural value chain. As a former minister for agriculture who is now at the ADB, uh, Akim additional, those kind of initiatives, what are they? Where are they now? We're identifying the full value chain of each major agricultural commodity and trying to affect it, in trying to put information, put systems into the agricultural space. So, so um, I think that we need policy clarity around agriculture. And I think we need, uh, obviously, we need some reforms around that sector. Let's wrap up with the investment. You've touched on investment, trade, and all. We know the president just got back again from China, and they put pen to paper. We saw agreements there, even that, the Ministry of Solid Minerals. Yes. So what, what, what do you make? That of seemed like, it seemed, based on the news we've seen, like the first major successful mm. foreign trip. trip the president has made. Um, and the president should be commended for that. But I'm still concerned that we need a clear... I, I think generally that one of the things we haven't done well is to document our strategy for the economic reform so that there's clarity around them. And that includes our strategy for foreign direct investment. Uh, there's no policy paper that we can point to that explains our reform strategy, that explains our strategy for foreign direct investment. Maybe that's part of the issues with marketing our reforms and, and the getting FDI to resume. Of course, there have been other issues, uh, the uncertainty around exchange rates and uh, investments, maybe security and all of that. Uh, the political climate is also contributing. There's so much toxicity around our politics, which any investor will be concerned about and ultimately. But I think that my suspicion is that we're beginning to be closer to the turning point. Mm. I that's, think that's a good one. Yes, that's my, <laughs> that's my honest sense. Wow. I think if you focus on the $900 million yeah. subscription, you, the trade surpluses yeah. we're recording, the slight uptick in GDP, the declining trend of inflation, um, you might say that maybe, and then, of course, Dangote, petroleum becoming a domestic market. I think that we may be close to the beginning of the turning point. Interesting conversation as usual. I've been speaking to Mr. Kwame Agbaje, who's starting the week with us on Business Nigeria. Uh, he's the Chief Executive Officer at RTC Advisory. Thank you so much. Have a great week. Thank you very much. All right. They're coming up on the show. I know you have questions for the NNPCL as they begin lifting up petrol from Dangote Refinery. Well... Mr. Adedayo Shegun answered some of these questions. He's the executive vice president downstream of the NNPCL. After this break.